Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, we continue to react to Sunday's preseason opener. We'll hear from head coach Josh McDaniels and coach Mike Bartz, the engineer of the greatest show on turf. He joined my radio show on Monday. You'll hear that conversation plus a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. You're to win as a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show the first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show as soon as it becomes available. And, of course, as always, if you're checking this out on YouTube, it's because of my man Ari. He does a great job each and every day making sure we're up on YouTube. We're looking good. We're sounding good. We're supposed to do what we're supposed to do, right? Ari's done a great job making sure that happens. You can check him out on Twitter at Ari Producers. You can always hit me up on Twitter as well as many of you do at your boy Q254. And we got the Lockdown Raider Podcast voicemail line at 707-654-4693. Those calls and texts will come up in segment number three of the show. Segment number two, Coach Mike Martz. He's uh, the engineer of the, the greatest show on turf when he was with the St. Louis Rams. He's a Super Bowl champion head coach. He also now is part of the 33rdteam.com and he's been doing a lot of previews for teams in their upcoming season in 2023 and he did one for the silver and black. So I saw that. Matter of fact, 33rdteam.com actually sent me a direct message on Twitter and said, hey, just a little FYI and I thought, cool, thank you. I have Coach Mart's number. Let me reach out to him. So I hit him up and he responded immediately and was like, yeah, I'll be glad to join the radio show. So we did that on Monday, and so I want you to hear that conversation. That'll come up in segment number two, just his thoughts on Jimmy G, Coach McDaniels in year two, what this offense could do, and also what the defense could do. That's all, again, coming up in segment number two. Here in segment number one of the show, really like to do news and notes of the day, and it's not really more news and notes. It's just a little bit more reaction to what we saw on Sunday as the Raiders came away at the 34-7 victory over the 49ers. And as I've mentioned many times, it's not about wins and losses in the preseason. But it's about how you got the wins, how you got the losses in the preseason. It's the execution, how you played offensively, how you played defensively. And for the most part, I thought the Raiders did really well on both sides of the ball. I didn't mention one player on Monday's show, and I should have. And shame on me for not doing that. But Malcolm Kuntz, he's a guy that we've talked about quite a bit on the show. And I've even gone to the extent of saying, I don't think he's long for the team. I thought he did a really good job on Sunday, right? Max Crosby didn't play. Chandler Jones didn't play. You didn't see guys out there like Nate Hobbs, Trayvon Merrick, you know, guys like that. You didn't see those kind of starters out there. But Malcolm Kuntz, I thought, was a guy that was around the ball and around the quarterback a lot, right? He's a guy who's fighting for a job. He's fighting to stay on this roster. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. Uh, I probably go with my gut feeling and still think that he's on the outside looking in just if for no other reason because it's a numbers game. But on Sunday... I thought he did a really good job. Again, I saw 51 around the ball a lot and around the the not only ball carrier, but the quarterback quite a bit. And that's what he was really able to do his rookie year. So didn't see too much of that at all last year, but was able to see it on Sunday. So these next uh, couple days of joint practices with the Rams coming up on Wednesday and Thursday in L.A. as the Raiders are already there. Uh, that's going to be big for Malcolm Kuntz and also the game on Saturday. All the preseason games are going to be big for Malcolm Kuntz and a handful of other guys that are on the roster bubble. And of course, uh, this is the year that it goes from the 90-man man roster to the 53-man roster. There's no levels to it. It's not like it goes from 90 to 83 to 65 to 53 or whatever the numbers. I just threw some random numbers out there. It's going from 90 to 53. So there's going to be a lot of guys all of a sudden when cut day comes that are out of jobs on the Raiders and around the National Football League. But Malcolm Kuntz, I, I want to give him some credit, and I didn't do that on Monday show, and I should have. I also want to give head coach Josh McDaniels and defensive coordinator Patrick Graham for putting the team in position to succeed, right? I mean, there's a lot of times that we criticize coaches and we say that they're not this, they're not that or that the other. They obviously had a good game plan going into the game. They obviously were coached up to try to win that game, and the Raiders went out there and did it. Coach McDaniels, I thought, did a really good job with a rookie quarterback that had never seen the field in the NFL before as far as a game goes, and 
did a good job. Patrick Graham, I thought, did really well with a bunch of new players and some some veterans out there as well that can, you know, that are competing and, and showing, providing some leadership and did a really good job as well. So I do want to give the coaching staff some props and I want to give Malcolm Coons some props. Now, there are a couple of players who I thought didn't play well that I didn't mention on Monday's show either that I definitely need to bring up. One was left tackle Justin Heron. Uh, he was a guy that uh, was responsible for Cleve Farrell getting to the quarterback. He just basically allowed Cleve Farrell to whoop him, and he got, uh, got home to Aiden O'Connell and was able to get him to the ground for the only sack given up. And, of course, Cleve Farrell would be the one guy to get the sack against his former team in the silver and black. But apparently there's a reason why he's third on the depth chart, right, as far as the left tackles go. He's just not that good. So when it's all said and done, and there's a lot of competition right now on that offensive line. There's a lot of bodies in that room that won't be there when cutdown time comes. I would not be shocked at all to see Justin Heron left off the list because he just doesn't seem like a guy that is really starting to figure it out. Of course, he's coming off of a, a, a knee injury that he had a year ago. And I'll tell you, the couple times I've seen him in practice, I know that they liked him when they made the move for him. But the couple times I've seen him in practice, I don't know if his knee is just not where it needs to be. But he didn't look that great in practice, and he sure didn't look that great in the game on Sunday either. And then, and I did mention this guy a, a little bit briefly on Monday, cornerback Azizi Hearn, right? Azizi Hearn is a rookie, and he's a guy that Sam Darnold for the 49ers, he found him and said, where's 48 at? Where's 48? Oh, there he is? Okay, let's go pick on him early and often. As soon as Sam Darnold got into the game, he immediately started attacking Azizi Hearn. Now, he did come up with a nice play on a Curtis Bolton, uh, not punch out when they caused a fumble in the in the second half of the game, and Azizi Hearn came up with a fumble recovery, one of the Raiders' two turnovers that they created. But for the most part, man, he was not very good while he was out there. So those are the two guys that stood out to me that was like, okay, I know you probably didn't lose your job today, but you've got a lot of work to do this week during joint practices with the Rams and also in the next couple preseason games if you're going to try to hold on to your spot. So Aziz Hearn didn't look too good. Justin Heron didn't look too good. But Malcolm Kuntz and the Raiders coaching staff, I thought, did a really good job. Speaking of the Raiders coaching staff, Head coach Josh McDaniels met with us on Monday by way of Zoom. The team is already in L.A. And unfortunately, about four or five questions in, the Zoom call froze up. And so we had to end it right there. And it sucks because I was up next. I was on deck, right? I had my, my, my batting helmet on, right? I had my bat in my hand. I was, I was uh, ju- judging the pitcher's uh, throws. I was ready to go to the plate. <laughs> I, was, I was ready, man. You know, on Zoom calls, you got to make sure you unmute yourself. You be prepared. Ask your question. Bada boom, bada bing. I hate it when guys have to talk themselves into questions. I was ready. And then all of a sudden, the Zoom call just froze. So uh, I was stuck there on hold. Like, pause. <laughs> they basically paused on me, but there were a few sound bites that I wanted to bring to the table. Only a couple of them, as a matter of fact, from head coach Josh McDaniels on uh, Monday. The first one, Vinny Bonsignor asked him about Dylan Parham. Is there any update on uh, the left guard that left the game? It looked like he had a head injury, and also the thoughts about you know why they left for LA on Sunday night as opposed to traveling on Monday. No update on Dylan. Um, the you know the thought process uh, you know with the logistics here. Um, relative to the mandatory day off and those types of things. Um, you know, we can't travel on a mandatory day off. So we didn't want to, well, we just thought this was the best thing logistically for us is to go ahead and travel after the game. And, you know, that way we can kind of, you know, have our feet on the ground here and, um, you know, not, not try to do too much the day before, um, we're getting ready to uh, practice with another football team, meaning, you know, if we take the day off at home Monday and then try to go over the San Francisco stuff Tuesday, you know, at our place, you know, hurry up and kind of cram in something for L.A. and then travel on the same day, then get up and go practice with them. We just didn't feel like that was conducive to you know, giving ourselves the best opportunity to have a productive day. So <clears throat> we uh, we thought this was best. So most importantly in that whole soundbite was no update on Dylan Parham. Again, it looked like uh, he had a head injury. It looked like he probably had a concussion on Sunday. That's not confirmed, so I don't want to go ahead and just throw that out there. But from a distance, from the press box, that's what it looked like to me when he took a knee. It looked like it was more of a you know head trauma type thing. So uh, hopefully he's able to get back sooner rather than later. But uh, you heard Josh McDaniels right there. No update on one Dylan Parham. And the last soundbite I have for you for head coach Josh McDaniels as he met with us, only was able to take a handful of questions on Monday, was about the competition between Jermaine Illuminor and Thayer Mumford. That's at that right tackle spot. I think that's a competition that's really uh, hot and heavy 
right? That's one that's probably going to go down to the wire to determine who's going to get that job. I think Munford has the size that the Raiders are looking for at that right tackle, but Illuminor has the experience. Where Munford uh, has the great size uh, as opposed to what Illuminor has, Illuminor has a lot more experience than Thayer Munford does, so that can put Thayer in, uh, you know, kind of behind the eight ball as far as uh, that competition at the right tackle spot. But here's head coach Josh McDaniels talking about that competition there at the right side of the offensive line. Yeah, both of them, um, you know, did did some good things. Um, I thought both of them were challenged. This is a really, like I said, this is a really good front. So, um, you know, they got a decent chunk during the week. And then, you know, each of them had a handful of drives uh, yesterday in the game too. So, um, <clears throat> you know, some some good, some positive, and then uh, a few things that I think our entire tackle group can learn from relative to playing that style uh, of defense. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with the way they're going about it. They're competing hard. I think they're making one another better, uh, that whole group. And, um, you know, look forward to seeing the, the challenges that we're going to see this week, too. So there you go right there. Head coach Josh McDaniels talking about the competition. And that's going to be one of those competitions that I do believe is going to go all the way down throughout the course of the preseason and all the way down to cut time when they finally put out the final depth chart. Uh, I guess right now I would say the leader in the clubhouse would be Thayer Munford. But I would say it's not by much, and it, it might it might really be neck and neck where it's a it's a tie right now, and a tie goes to the runner, and the runner I would say is probably Jermaine Illuminor because he came into training camp as the starting right tackle. So uh, I think it's really close right now. It's one of those like in boxing, don't go to the to the judges, don't go to the scorecards because you might be surprised. <laughs> don't go to the scorecards score cards right now between Jermaine Illuminor and Thayer Mumford at that right tackle spot because I do think it's very. Very close. Coming up in segment number two of the show, you're going to hear from former head coach, Coach Mike Martz. He was the engineer of the greatest show on turf with the Rams. They won a Super Bowl. He's part of the 33rdteam.com, and he had a preview that he put out on the website about the Raiders in 2023. You'll hear that conversation I had with them on Monday on my radio show. You'll hear it coming up in segment number two after I tell you about eBay Motors. They are our partners, and they've teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And let's see. We'll look at the quarterback position. He has Kirk Cousins. He has Dak Prescott. He has Geno Smith. Let's entertain ourselves. Let's roll with Geno Smith, right? He was the big surprise for 2022. What does Vinny have to say about Geno Smith? He says, looking for a safe quarterback to take as a starter late after you wait on the position? Then you could ride with the Seahawks' Geno Smith, who was the biggest surprise fantasy quarterback in 2022, taking over for Russell Wilson. Smith took advantage of a great system under Shane Waldron and was a perfect fit with top wideouts DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Smith is back with Waldron and now has rookie Dynamo Jackson Smith and Jigba too, and he's now established as a solid option. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure you ride. your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks and struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So switch gears, crank the AC, say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you'll know Always, you'll be set up for success from the get-go with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Not that dude. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to get into the conversation I had with Coach Mike Martz on my radio show, Unnecessary Roughness, on Raider Nation Radio 920 on Monday, talking all things Raiders football for 2023. He's part of the 33rdteam.com. He's been doing a lot of previews for upcoming uh, this upcoming season for different teams, and he did one on the Raiders, the 33rd team. They actually sent me a direct message and said, hey, I just want you to know that this is out there. You might be interested in it. And I said, yeah, not only am I interested in that, I'm interested in having a coach on the show. So I reached out to him. He came on the show and just wanted you to hear that conversation that we have. We started out talking all things Coach McDaniels and also quarterback Jimmy G and the dynamic between the two guys. I think the, 
relationship between the play caller, who happens to be the head coach and coordinator, uh, and, and the quarterback, that's that dynamic is is the most important uh, in the football team. In terms of uh, Jimmy or the quarterback uh, being comfortable and understanding, and you know the reason for the play call, you know the expectations, what it's trying to do, and you know he has a different approach because he's comfortable with it. He's been in it. Uh, I think it's huge, and I think it's uh, he could have his best year if he stays healthy. You know, you mentioned in the piece that you wrote about the buy-in, the buy-in for Jimmy G. He'll buy into what Coach McDaniels is, is, is asking him to do. How important that there is no question, there is no, you know, just wondering what, what's going on. Instead, like you mentioned, there's immediate buy-in from Jimmy G. Well, he's just a little bit of a different guy, and, and I don't know that in San Francisco um, it, things are really matched. And I think that match – uh, is really really important, and I think uh, with Josh and, and Jimmy G, that whole the ability to have history there and then believe it in each other, and you know he he has a different relationship. I'm talking about the head coach now uh, with Jimmy, where you know that he gives him a little bit more latitude, if you will, and uh, I think I think quarterbacks really appreciate that, and it's just an indication of trust. Again, we're talking with Coach Mike Martz here on Raider Nation Radio 920, Unnecessary Roughness, talking all things Raiders and their 2023 outlook. And Jimmy G, one thing I know that he does really well is throw the ball into the end zone, you know, in the red zone. And, and obviously you got to really protect the ball in the red zone. What is it about quarterbacks that are really good in the red zone? Well, the thing that's interesting for quarterbacks, it's the first thing to look at when you look at quarterbacks coming out of college and for aging quarterbacks because the the speed of the game uh, just really accelerates once you cross the 20-yard line. You know, the tempo of like having to get the ball out fast, having to see things quicker and react quicker. And some guys can't do that as well or adjust to as well. Now, he does, which is an indication to me that he's down deep inside. He has that it factor. He's got what it takes, you know, in, in terms of a decision maker and getting the ball out quick. The one thing I will say that we really talked about, this surgery they had on his shoulder here, what, uh, two years ago, I think it was, mm-hmm. or last year when he went into camp, Nobody said much of it. You know, before he talked about, people talked about his arm strength, and he just kind of said an off-the-cuff remark, and I never forgot it. The surgery has brought his shoulder back, and he's got his strength back in his arm. And and I just have always felt like he didn't have everything on it when I watched him play over the years. and I just It was kind of shocking to me, and nobody really picked up on it. But I think it's it's a really, really big deal if his shoulders bother him all these years. And then he's gotten it fixed, and then he had this other injury. But I think a healthy Jimmy G right now uh, could be extremely effective. That's a really good nugget right there. I didn't pick up on that one as well. And that's why we have you on the show, Coach. Coach Mike Martz is with us here on Raider Nation Radio 920, dropping gems like that. And so I'm looking at the weapons he has. Last year I thought this team had a lot of weapons. Offensively they could be dangerous. I feel like, Coach, this year they even have more with the addition of Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer in the, in the, the tight end out of uh, Notre Dame. I feel like in the red zone he's going to thrive. Josh Jacobs, as soon as he gets back, whenever that happens, I feel like this offense could be even better than the one we thought that the Raiders had last year. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I don't think there's a weakness now. I don't think that they're wanting for anything at this point personnel-wise. Just keep them healthy, right? So yeah. the biggest issue is, is uh, having everybody on the same page. And the buy-in is such a big deal. What we had the Rams was everybody was completely uh, convicted about what we were doing. They couldn't wait to get to practice every day. And, and that's a it's kind of a unique quality. And, you know, these guys, I think, are all kind of Josh McDaniels now. And I think that's very, very important. And this quarterback becomes an extension of him, which, you know, when you think about it, it it's extremely important in terms of the connection with those players. We talk about Jimmy G a lot, but another quarterback on the roster is Brian Hoyer. Obviously, he's very familiar with Josh McDaniels. And not even the field, the play on the field, Coach. I'm wondering how important and how critical is that is that know-how and that knowledge of the system for Brian Hoyer to even help the young man, Aiden O'Connell, who we saw a lot of yesterday? Well, I mean, it's very, it's very important. I think without, they don't have to teach him anything. Mm-hmm. Well, young quarterbacks, if they're smart, when they sit in the meetings, they observe and they listen and they watch. They watch how, how they take notes, what they take notes about, how they watch film. You know, the things, the questions asked about, you know, a particular play when it goes in. You know, what are my responsibilities versus blitz? You know, who, in this protection, was it a three-step, five-step? What is, you know, 
all the things that you have to know, and then you have to assimilate that without thinking about it uh, over a period of time and then play. And I think young guys coming in, uh, they, they don't have that in college. They have buzzwords and, and hand signals out there, and they just, you know, the coverages are, are fairly benign, but it's so different, and the speed of the game is so different. So I think just how to study and learn what he's doing as a, as a rookie is extremely important how you come into the, the NFL. I'm not sure if you got a chance to see any of the game yesterday, but he looked pretty good. I was surprised that as a rookie getting his very first NFL start preseason or not, he was out there and he looked pretty poised and relaxed and like the moment wasn't too big for him. How big is that just for the teammates around him to see that that quarterback wasn't rattled? Well, it's everything. It's everything. It's everything for not just for him, but the rest of the players because it's, it's kind of built into a crescendo, if you will. You know what I mean? It's, the more success he has, the more excited he gets the players, that feedback comes back and it's demonstrative, you know, and then all of a sudden that confidence between those players and the quarterback continues to build, and that's how it starts. You know, that's that's where it starts and it, what makes a career. And if you if that doesn't happen, if the trust between the rest of those guys and that quarterback, if they're not sure about him, then it's just not going to happen. Coach Mike Martz is our guest here on Unnecessary Roughness, Raider Nation Radio 920. In your piece, you talked about the defense, and the defense has been a struggle for the Raiders for a very long time. They played well yesterday. They've looked pretty good in training camp. How big is the addition of Marcus Peters for that secondary in particular? It's huge. I mean, they went, they brought in, I think they had, what, they signed four uh, free agents, a couple corners and safeties and uh, linebacker. I, I just think that the overhaul back there was – long overdue, mm-hmm. and I, I think the personnel issue there was real obvious, and I'm not knocking the guys that are there. They just couldn't get it done. But, and right. then they got some young guys back there, too. So that, that was the Achilles heel of this team. It just yeah, was. And they know, look- no matter what you do on offense, you know, it, it, it just was. Right, and they're starting to get their hands on the ball, right? And Marcus Peters is a guy that has a career, he's made a career of getting his hands on the ball and even taking it back to the house when he does that. And it seems like it's really starting to trickle down to the young guys, including Ja'Korian Bennett, the young man out of Maryland, the yeah. fourth-round pick. How yes, good could he right. be, especially with that speed he has? Well, he's got, he has all the tools to watch him come out of college. He, he really does. And he's having a, uh, having a role model like that. It's kind of like what Aeneas Williams did for us when we picked him up in 01 and, and, you know, after a a 10 win season, he took us to the Super Bowl. and his leadership on, on defense was everything because we were the worst defense in the league the year before we went to the number two defense in the league in a heartbeat. And a lot of that had to do with his leadership and his energy. Speaking of leadership and energy, how about Max Crosby? (laughs) He's got Chandler Jones across from him. They drafted Tyree Wilson, but how fun is Max to watch? (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's, you know, those guys are so rare when they come along. because the, the high energy, the enthusiasm, they're so much fun to be around to begin with. And then just to stand on the field and watch them do their thing is, is a, you know, I mean, that's why you coach. It, it's a real thrill. And how, I mean, how much better, how much more can he provide? He keeps saying he wants to be number one in the league. How much better can this young man get? Well, he can be as good as he wants. You know, and the, the whole idea there is, is you want somebody like that that's played for a while now. Mm-hmm. He's been in the league a few years, and so and he's not done. He has a goal for himself that extends beyond everybody else. I think that's really, really important. You know, talking to guys, some of the great players have been around over the years, a guy like Marshall, for, he never saw himself as wanting to be, you know, the best in the league. He wanted to be the best ever, that kind of a thing. And when you chase that carrot, you can do anything. I like it. I do. Coach Mike Martz is our guest here on Radio Nation Radio 920 Unnecessary Ruffs. Just got a couple more questions for you. Your biggest uh, off-field storylines is Josh Jacobs, so we know what he's going through. You know, he's trying to get the contract extension. He can't sign a long-term deal. He can only sign the franchise tag. Maybe a little bit of money on top of that. Um, what do you think? How Do you think Josh Jacobs will get back to, to camp before uh, week one? Probably not. Um, I think he'll roll in at the last second. Um, you know, the agent really kind of controls all that. Um whether that's a good thing or a bad thing doesn't really matter. It's just what it is. And I think as a coach, you stay out of it completely. When he's, you don't have him, you don't have him. When he's there, he's there. and You go accordingly. So uh, a lot is made off the field about it. But when they're in, when they walk into the locker room and they get out on the field, you know, everybody is it's just back to business. So, you know, hopefully this thing, that he'll be a long-time Raider. I, I just don't know what their intentions are towards him. 
Um, a lot, I, I guess guys just don't want to pay running backs today. But, you know, when you get one like him, when you get one of the two or three best in the league that are going to perennial uh, powerhouse kind of guys and, and productive like he's been and can be for a long time, personally, I think you lock him up, you know, and this means too much to the football team. But, you know, the running backs are kind of a dime a dozen in the eyes of a lot of the league teams because there's so many of them that are kind of about the same. But like I said, when you get the two or three, they're separate themselves. They're worth every penny of it. You know, we saw Zeke Elliott today agree with a deal with the Patriots for like $3 million. And we know how much Zeke was getting paid at one point. How does the how does that change for running backs where they get the money that we all feel like they deserve, especially guys like Josh Jacobs, who is the upper echelon of the running back position? It's not just so much running back. It's, it's uh, everything. You know, when you when you have a career that's going really well and you get paid, you, you can you need to continue to step it up. You can't be the same even. You know, not they're not paying you for what you were. They're paying you for what they think you can become. And just status quo isn't, isn't good enough. You got to step it up, buddy. You know, and or and you can't decrease, which so many guys have done. And running backs can do that sometimes because they get banged up a little bit. The offensive alignment change, and there's some things beyond their control. But still, the great ones they find a way to make it happen. Right, and I'm I'm anticipating Josh Jacobs getting back. I'm hoping it's sooner rather than later because he is a great one and really a big identity piece for this Raiders offense. Final question for you, Coach. I wanted to ask you about Coach McDaniels. It's his second year with the Raiders. He looks like to me that he's more relaxed, more comfortable. Not that he's taking it easy, but it just seems like he feels a lot better about what he's doing in year two with the Raiders as opposed to last year when he was just getting to know the team. What are your thoughts on, on a coach in the second year? Well, I think the biggest issue is – Every you know, it's it's kind of a culture that he's trying to create there, whatever it is, you know, and it it's hard to do in just one season. Um, the buy in is huge from all the coaches, everybody in the front office and you know, of course the players are everything, but you know, having established that and having everybody uh buy into this thing and have the same approaches, you know, that's probably why he feels better because everybody's on the same page now and it's hard to do in just one season. So there was a conversation that I had on Monday on my radio show with Coach Mike Mars, the engineer of the greatest show on turf with the St. Louis Rams, obviously a Super Bowl champ, and it's always great to pick the, the mind of someone who's really sharp when it comes to the NFL game and really knows what he's talking about and what he's looking for as well. So hopefully you enjoyed that conversation with Coach Mike Martz from Monday. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. This is the Locked On Raiders podcast. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast, your calls and texts draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. We'll start off with a call from Nathan Glass, our guy from Cali. He's calling to talk about Aiden O'Connell and the way he picks up head coach Josh McDaniels' playbook. He also talks about the new beginnings for the Raiders in 2023. Here he is, Nathan Glass from Cali. You're on the Lockdown Raiders podcast. Hey, Q. Nathan Glass from California. Just wanted to make this quick and touch on two uh, two topics real quick. The first one is Aiden O'Connell. Um, I'm not surprised at his numbers. I know I know what my boy can do. My issue with Aiden O'Connell was how fast would he pick up Josh Jacobs? Um, not sorry, not Josh Jacobs. Um, Josh McDaniel's playbook. Because my thing was, for example, I'm not speaking this into existence, Raider Nation, I'm just using this as an example. Let's say the Raiders go 4-0 in the regular season. And Jimmy G go down. I don't want a situation where it's like, okay, Aiden comes in and now you have to cut the playbook in half because he's not picking it up right. I want a situation where if he if that situation happens where he goes down, the playbook don't change. The full playbook is still open to him, no matter who the quarterback is. Everything still keep rolling. You know what I'm trying to say? So the way he played looks like he's picking up the, the playbook just fine, and that's a good sign. The next thing I want to bring up, uh, Raider Nation, is I listened to you guys' uh, podcast um, yesterday. And I noticed a lot of you guys are bringing up that 4-0 start last season. Look, let it go. I get it. I get it. It happens. You went 4-0 in the preseason and went only won six games. But you guys, you guys got to let that go. New season, new beginnings, new start, all that. You know what I'm trying to say? You can't 
You can't live in the past. You got to let that go. You got to swallow that, swallow that and let it go. You know, uh, one team I use for a reference in this, look at the Jaguars in 2016. They won three games. The very next season, they were one play away from me. They were cheated from the Super Bowl. Look at the turnaround. You got to let it go. You got to swallow it, learn from it, move on. So feel good about your, uh, about your rookie quarterback. Feel good about your team. Feel good about your defense. Feel good about this season. Stay positive and everything will be fine. Nathan Glass out. Thanks so much for the call, my man. I appreciate you. And I do remember you calling about Aiden O'Connell when the Raiders first drafted him. And I'll be the first to admit, I was not sure what to expect. I still don't know what to expect. I mean, we've seen one preseason game, and so far so good for Aiden O'Connell, but I still don't know exactly what that means he's going to be in the long run, right? We don't know at all, but uh, again, so far so good. And it looks like, as you mentioned and brought up, that he's understanding Josh McDaniel's offense. And the playbook is something that everyone has said is very complicated. But man, just by judging him on Sunday, looking at him go out there and take the first team reps and play a long time on, on Sunday, it didn't look like he was sweating it at all. Didn't look like the, the moment was too big for him. So as I mentioned, man, well done there for Aiden O'Connell. And also, you know, when it comes to new beginnings as a lifelong Raider fan, I understand why, why folks would be hesitant to just say, okay, yeah, this year is going to be different. The Raiders are going to go out there and do some good things. Hey, saw some great results from Sunday. Team looked good offensively and defensively. Yeah, they're going to be really good because too many times we believe that and it hasn't come up that. So uh, I think everyone's really in a wait-and-see type mode. I think a lot of people feel good about what they saw on Sunday, but they don't want to get too high just yet because, well, you get too high on something, well, then you'll get burned, as you very well know. Nathan Glass, thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Southern Indiana Raider. It says, AQ, hey Southern Indiana Raider here. I watched the game on Sunday and two additional times. I got to say, I was more impressed with O'Connell than I anticipated. That's good news because now there's no way Garoppolo makes it all season. The defense was revealing because I feel like these guys understand what they're supposed to do. I'm not going to anoint them as anything more than, a compet than competitive at this point. I'm glad to see it, but not swallowing the bait just yet. Wilson is still limping around, and Jalen Carter blew up the play on his first snap. We're drafting injured players with potential. Weak. I'm going to suspend any further negativity, but my focus is still on the proven, lousy staff. I am praying that they prove me wrong. Thank you, Q, for making my daily commute awesome. That is from Southern Indiana Raider. And as far as the staff goes, that's just, I mean, that's all it can be is a wait-and-see mode, right? They have to go out there and prove it. And I've said that a lot of times. That's a fair criticism. Until they go out there and prove that they know what they're doing, then, you know, it's going to be remain to be seen. I think Tyree Wilson's going to be okay. Uh, I don't know when he's going to get back out there. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I didn't see him on Sunday, as, as it sounds like many people did see him. So I didn't see him limping around. And as I mentioned on Monday's show, I haven't seen him since I talked to him at the draft on uh, when he was drafted right after uh, the Raiders picked him number seven overall. And I didn't see a limp from him then. So who knows? Maybe maybe he's is limping. I didn't see it. But we will see. Uh, I do feel pretty good about Aiden O'Connell, what I've seen so far. Now I just want to see more. And, you know, Jimmy G, hopefully he, he makes it all season long. But, again, history tells us that he won't. So, Southern Indiana Raider, thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Barry in Baltimore. He's calling to talk about the game on Sunday and what his overall thoughts were on the team in general. Here he is, Barry from Baltimore. Hey, what up, Q? This is uh, Barry from Baltimore. Uh, just calling in uh, just a couple of my thoughts regarding the preseason game um, against the 49ers, man. Um, first of all, I know it's preseason, but, hey, a win's a win. <laughs> You know, it doesn't count. So, you know, it's all good on that. Uh, but I was impressed, man. Like you said, I was very impressed with the defense flying around. It just seemed different. You know, um, now it's one game. I know it's preseason. It doesn't count. I know that. Um, you know, but they were flying around, making plays, man. I was very, very impressed by that. I hope it continues. Um, I hope it continues in practice. I hope it continues in um you know, in these uh, joint practices this week. And then, you know, against the, I just hope they continue and stack on that. Um, I think it's important for the defense. Um, I'm glad to hear that, you know, um, Graham kind of simplified a little bit. So I hope that helps. You got guys in the second year. So, you know, just like everybody, you know, I'm not saying they got to be a top five defense, you know, like you mentioned, or elite. Yeah, just be better, you know, just be mid, you know, just, I know it doesn't sound good, but, you know, what we're used to, <laughs> you know, so anything is improvement. So I'm impressed with that. And then, of course, I'm very impressed with O'Connell. Um, I was kind of on the fence when they picked him. I didn't know anything about him. 
So I kind of took the approach and let's see what he does. And he impressed me. Like I said, first game, preseason, I get that. But the way he processed, the way he delivered the ball, he didn't look rattled. I was impressed. You know, I, I mean, after the first half, I was like, all right, that's QB2. I mean, I'd much rather if something happened to Jimmy G, and I do not want that to happen. Um, but if something did, I'd rather see O'Connell than, than Hoyer. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't have faith in Hoyer. He is what he is. I'd rather go with O'Connell. But, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen this year. And we'll go from there. But, yeah, I was a press O'Connell, press the O-line, even without the starters in there. So I think they did good, um, you know, just all around. I'm very impressed. Um, running game. Now, I like Zamir White. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a good power back. But, man, he he's no Josh Jacobs. I mean, you could tell a difference. He's not as elusive. He doesn't break as many tackles. He kind of seems like he goes down pretty quick, you know, first, second hit which you don't notice that with Jacobs. I mean, there's a difference, but I'd love to have both of them. You know, power back at Jacobs. They need Jacobs back. I'm sure the coach staff realizes that. Hopefully they get him in, man. I'm just hoping they get him in sooner or later. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, just impressed. Wanted to call him my thoughts on it, man. But uh, that's it, man. Good job on everything you did with the pre and post game. I heard you when I was listening to you, so shout out to you, man. Keep doing your thing. But I'm out. Go Raiders. Thank you for the call, my man. And, yeah, win is a win. You always want to win the game. Right? There's not anyone who plays a game that doesn't want to win, regardless if it matters or not. There's not anybody who's watching the game that doesn't want to see a win. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, hell, I was glad to see the Raiders win. Not that you know it matters, but it's still nice to come out on the, the right side of thing. And for nothing else, bragging rights, right? It's the 49ers. Why not brag a little something, something? But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you want to you wanna win games. As far as Aiden O'Connell, uh, there's definitely a lot of things to like there. And as you mentioned, Zamir is not even close to J.J., Right, He needs to run tough through defenders. I know he had moments he had opportunities to do it, and he really didn't. Seemed a little hesitant, but I still think he could be a really good one punch, Josh Jacobs and him. Not him and Josh Jacobs, but Josh Jacobs and him. That's how it is. Josh, we already know how he runs and what his style is. Now Zamir White's got to continue to work his way up there. I thought he had a couple opportunities to show who he could be, and really, as I said, was a little hesitant on Sunday, but I think that that will continue to come with time. So thank you for that call. I do appreciate you. And with all that being said, I think Josh Jacobs comes back sooner rather than later. Anyway, you saw a couple guys running back sign uh, with new teams on Monday. Zeke Elliott is now a member of the New England Patriots. One year, what, $3 million with the potential and incentives up to $6 million. And then Dalvin Cook, the worst kept secret in the NFL. He was going to sign with the Jets. Well, he did. A little bit over a $7 million contract with incentives up to $8 million. So when guys start finding new homes, I also think that that's another reason for Josh Jacobs to decide to hurry up and sign that franchise tag and get back to the silver and black. And, uh, you know, I know, he again, Zamir White is not a threat to Josh Jacobs, but I, I'm assuming that he wants to be out there with his brothers. He just wants to feel like he's being treated and compensated fairly. So uh, I'm hoping sooner rather than later we'll see Josh Jacobs back at Raiders facility. Up next, got a text from Cy Reezy. He says, Zeus runs hard, but where's the vision? Elusiveness, setup of blocks. Not fair to compare it to J.J., who's elite and all the above. But if there's not a big hole right in front of him, Zeus runs into his blocker or first tackler, gets him down on the outside. Vision is a running back's number one weapon, and it can't be taught. Zeus developed, vi Zeus developed vision if the game slows down for him, but he's got to show more if he's going to be the starter. That's the text from Cyrese. And, yeah, I think we you know kind of went over that already with Barry in Baltimore. And, yeah, I mean, he just, he's got to figure it out. And I'm assuming that he's going to figure it out, but it's up to him to figure it out. I think that he does a good job as a number two. I don't look at him as a number one. And that's okay because when Josh Jacobs come back, comes back, that's exactly who he is. He's a number two. So thank you so much for that text. I appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Raider or RN for Life 420. That's Raider Nation for Life 420. He's calling to share his thoughts on the game and give some love to the defense off top. Here he is, RN, RN, RN for Life 420. Raider Nation for Life 420. I'll just break down what the initials mean. <laughs> How about that? Here he is, Raider Nation for Life 420. What up, Joe Q? This is RNL for Life 420. Man, I am. I just want to call to tell you, man, hey, that game was pretty cool. I'm very impressed about uh, what, what, what I saw, uh, especially the defense, man. You know, I, it's been a long time since we've seen the defense actually go hard, you know, with the energy that they came out with. with the, you know, the tackling was impressive. Uh, the teams, the the, the the front, you know, I, I watched a lot of Raiders, man, over the years and games, and uh, 
it, it, it always scared me. That's why I always, I always look for the energy, the energy, you know, and especially on the defense. Offense has always been, you know, up to par, but the defense has always been lazy, uh, half-assed, don't have one to tackle, you know, can't make it through the whole four quarters. I think we have a real good defense this year. I don't think this is a joke. I don't think this is just a uh, a high situation. I think we're real this time. Um, uh, as far as Aiden O'Connell, man, nail on the head, dog. Nail, nail on the head, man. The man went out there like he's been there before. I like that. Uh, Demir White ran hard. I think he could have ran a little harder. I think he could have ran a little harder, give him a little time. Uh, I love that. The linebacker, that's who I was paying attention to, Aubrey. I think, I think we might have some with Aubrey, man. That might be, that may, might be a good, good situation. But overall, man, I'm impressed. It's only for a preseason game. I get all that. But I play football, so I know what to look for. Hey, man, you're doing a great job, too. Love your show. Later. Thanks so much for the call, my man. Definitely appreciate you. And, yeah, the defense set the tone for the game, in my opinion. You get two, three and outs to start the game. Uh, you get two quarterback sacks on the first drive, you know, three plays, boom, two of those sacks, you got to give them a lot of credit. And then, of course, the offense goes down and drives uh, on the first offensive possession and scores a touchdown. Uh, had a nice little run game going. Uh, took about five minutes plus off the clock. Uh, did a really good job. So the defense set the tone, and the offense continued it up. So I thought that that went good. Uh, O'Connell, well done, game one. He's got to follow it up. Stack days. Just like I asked the defense to continue to stack days in practice, I want to see Aiden O'Connell stack days when it comes to these practices coming up with the Rams and, of course, the game coming up on Saturday. So uh, thank you so much for that call. I do appreciate you. Got time for one more text. That's from 614 Raider. It says, Q, it's 614 Raider here. What stood out to me the most was how much fun the guys were having. We know it's just a preseason, but if that's the way the second and third string guys are playing and having fun, it makes me think that the attitude has to be coming from the top. The Maxes and the Jimmy G's, et cetera. I can't wait to see where the season goes. Raiders at 614 Raider. And, yeah, they were having fun as a team. I saw Josh McDaniels laughing as a head coach. Uh, there was a lot of fun being had on Sunday at Allegiant Stadium. And you know why? Winning is fun. I don't care what level you're doing it at. I don't care if it's exhibition, regular season, playoff, Super Bowl. Winning is fun always. I don't care what you're playing, what sport, whatever it is. As long as you're winning, you're having fun. And they were showing that. That's why they consistently need to continue to win. They win more games, and obviously these ones don't matter in the win-loss column, but you win more games, you have more fun, you play a little bit looser, and then you go out there and you have a chance to be a very successful team. So hopefully they keep that up, and hopefully Josh McDaniels continues to have fun as well. 614 Raider, thanks for the text. I do appreciate you, and that's going to do it for today's show. Still got a call from Jay Peasy in the 209, a text from 661 Raider. Uh, we'll get to those on tomorrow's show. We'll have more news and notes, of course, and we'll start to turn the page and look forward to Rams uh, joint practices on Wednesday and Thursday when it comes to the Silver and Black and the Rams in L.A. getting ready for the game on Saturday. Until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.